Hello, I'm Tom Harmer, your town manager. Welcome to this edition of Talk of the Town. Today we're going to be talking about surtax, and we'll, we'll explain that in just a little bit. But first I wanted to introduce uh, my partner in crime today for this episode is Sue Smith. Sue is the finance director for the town of Lombo Key. Welcome, Sue. Thank you, Tom. So we're going to talk about surtax, as I mentioned, and we all go out and buy things. And so when we're out there buying things and we pay for it, we pay a tax, a sales tax, on our purchases. And uh, it's 6% is the state base sales tax, but there's an addition that goes up to 7% that can be added by counties. And so when you pay that 7%, the difference between 6 and 7 becomes a surtax revenue that is shared by formula to the cities and the county where the tax is paid. And so we benefit from that as part of our revenue as a town, and we use that for certain things. And there's a surtax item coming up on the ballot in Sarasota County, so we thought this would be good timing to share a little bit of information about the surtax program. So, Sue, could you share a little bit of background on surtax, and we'll start to then talk about what does it mean to the town? Sure. Um, the sales tax is a 1% local discretionary surtax. Um, for Manatee County, it's a half, half a percent, but for Sarasota County, it's a 1%. And it's not a new tax. It's been here since 1989 for Sarasota County. Um, and then it was renewed um, in 1997 for another 10 years. And then um, in 2007 is re renewed again for 15 years. So it's not something new. And the surtax is used to invest in local infrastructure, such as public safety, roads, sidewalks, our parks, and things of that nature. They have to be capital in nature, and they have to have a useful life of five years or more. And so when you talk about the surtax, it's restricted to infrastructure. So we can't use it for operating expenses. And, and when we say operating expenses, we mean like the day-to-day -day cost for salaries and training and those type of things. That's correct. Yeah. And so how would you define infrastructure? Um, I would define infrastructure as capital in nature. So anything that has a useful life of five years or more, um, something that is going to um, be um, like construction. Um, like we did the major renovation at Bayfront Park, which was like um, 1.3 million we invested of our own surtax money for that project. Um, we also invested in phase two, we had actually invested $4 million in beach nourishment. So those, so, so those types of things are capital in nature. Okay, and so we receive this money each year from Manatee County and Sarasota County. You mentioned in Sarasota County, because that's specifically what we're talking about today, it goes back to the 1980s. And these programs uh, have been renewed every so many years. And so we're in Surtax 3, is that correct? That's correct. And um, now we're prepping for Surtax 4. Okay, so this is the third program, and now they're renewing it. They're going to the voters because this requires a referendum. They're going to the voters to extend and go into a Surtax 4 program for another 15 years. That's correct. So when does the current Surtax 3 program expire? Surtax 3 ends in December of 2024. Okay, so the county, Sarasota County, is putting this on the ballot in November of 2022. Correct. So not this November, but next, next November. November. And that'll be uh, in advance of the current Surtax expiring, but it will then uh, ask the voters if they would like to extend it for another 15 years. That's correct. So then it'll be from 2025 for another 15 years. Right, through 2039. Through 2039. Okay, and so how much money does this mean from the Sarasota County side to us? How, how much does that uh, revenue equal over the 15-year period? Okay, well, phase three is projected to be 10 million um, by the time um, 2024 ends. Um, and um, they're projecting 13 million right now for, for phase four for, for Longboat Key. Okay, so that's the total amount over the 15 years. That's correct. And what traditionally has the town used that money for? Um, again, we, we did the Bayfront Park uh, construction. Um, we also invest a lot in public safety vehicles and equipment. Um, your typical ambulance costs about $300,000. Your fire trucks can close, be close to a million dollars, depending on if it's a ladder or not, a ladder truck. 
So um, we have benefited by that, those particular purchases, as well as patrol cars. Um, we also used $900,000 towards canal dredging. So there are certain categories that the town identified back in Surtax 3 that they would spend the money in related to public safety or parks and rec or canal dredging or beaches. And those categories then have specific projects that are identified during the process. That's right, during the uh, budget process and the five-year capital planning. We determine what projects are eligible under the program. Okay, good. And so the county is gearing up for this referendum and they're working with all of the cities in Sarasota County and we're providing certain information to them so the public can have access to that. That's correct. And so is there a particular uh, place that they can go if they want to see uh, what cities are thinking about and what the county process is leading up to the referendum? All right, Sarasota County has put out a website specifically for this referendum. Um, and it's Sarasota County surtax.net um, and um, you can find all the information from all of the different um, cities that are putting out there including Longboat Key and then we are going to have a public hearing um, and a workshop on November 15th. Okay so we'll have a public workshop then we just discussed it with our commission during the retreat uh, in October and we've had previous updates we've provided to them as we've been working through this when does the town need to make their final decision on the project list for the county? I believe it's April of 2022 is the final list that goes to the county. Um, but we have uploaded um, our wish list or our, our kind of um, all of the projects that we've been thinking about so far. Okay. And so we have that out on the website um, to, to give the, the public a, an opportunity to look at what we're thinking. So one of the benefits of sales tax or surtax is the who pays it so when you pay property taxes in the town for the operations of the town you own property here and you're a resident or or at least a property owner maybe a part-time resident who pays the surtax is it the same group um, actually if it's a sales tax everybody pays um, it's including visitors so a lot of visitors um, benefit from um, our facilities so they have an this is our opportunity to um, spread that cost to the users. That's a good point. You know, I think it's, it's a different distinction so that the visitors do help pay for this because they may impact through using our amenities on the island. That's correct. And through surtax is one way that they contribute financially to that instead mm -hmm. of just bearing the burden on the residents or the property owners that are here. That's right. So you mentioned some of the projects that the town has been paying for out of surtax and they're really kind of basic important things like fire trucks and ambulances and you know some money towards beaches uh, canal dredging uh, we're looking at generally that same type of list as we go forward into the surtax 4 program that's correct we have um, the categories we've developed our uh, public facilities you know improvements to the town hall roofs HVAC that type of thing um, we also have the um, public safety, um, again, ambulances and fire trucks on the list um, in the out years. Um, and then we have um, beach and parks. We have those um, park improvements uh, for the tennis center. And, and um, we have streets and drainage also on the list. Drainage is very important um, to the commission um, and uh, the flooding, stormwater. So we have that on the list, and then also some canal dredging. And, and you mentioned that in the Surtax 3 program, which still runs through 2024, but that'll provide uh, approximately $10 million to the town over that period of time. And then we're looking at 12 to $13 million projected for the next 15 years. If the Surtax wasn't available, where would we fund those items from? How would we fund, find the money to advance those projects? Yeah, well, normally we would have to use ad valorem taxes um, if we can't find another funding source. Um, sometimes we can get grants, but um, those are far and few. Um, so it's usually ad valorem taxes that, that fund these things. So if you look at the in another way, the, the surtax program helps um, mitigate any impacts to our ad valorem revenue that that's, may be necessary. That's true. Yeah. And it's a good partnership with the county for these type of infrastructure, kind of capital one-time projects or items. 
That's right. right. Anything else about the surtax that you'd like to share with the uh, public and the residents? Um, just that if you have any, um, if the public has um, interest in understanding, um, please go out to the website, um, come to the public hearing. If you have um, any ideas on what you'd like to see our surtax money spent on, then you should, um, you know, let us know. That's a really good point at the end about input. So we'll have the public hearing in November at our commission workshop, but they can also go to the county website and they can put in information, ideas for how the money can be used, and they can share that information with us as well as we're finalizing the list. So when we go to the spring and the commission approves that final list and provides it to the county, that information will then be available for the voters so that they can make an educated decision. That's right. All right, well, good. Well, thank you for joining me today, and thank you for sharing uh, this very important program with our residents and our voters and our visitors so they understand the importance of this as it ends up on the November 2022 ballot.